Kuyos and Cognigny are back in double safety for Lafayette, and they are both at the Lehigh 40-yard line, and that gives you some idea of how hard that wind is blowing in in the face of the Lehigh punter. And it is a poor kick. It hits that wind and will go out of bounds at about the 23-yard line, where the Leopards will put it in play first and 10. Well, Denny, you mentioned field position. Very important in a game like this. Well, it's going to be hard to get a good punt into that win regardless, but uh, the Leopards certainly uh, had hung tough. Uh, and this time, Danny Ryan just clearly shanked it. Ball at the 24-yard line. Ball carried by Shepko, and Shepko gets down to around the 22-yard line. I think they're just recycling the clock now because it says 9.16 and we haven't played five minutes yet, I don't think, here in the second half, but we'll have to see. The time will be unofficial. Second down and nine now for the Lafayette Leopards. Lehigh leading by a score of three to nothing on the strength of a 37-yard field goal by Mike Wayland with 4.40 remaining in the first quarter. But now the Leopards in white, threatening to score, have the ball down deep in Lehigh University territory. Craig Williams is the inside man on the eye. Fake to Shepko, up the middle, the pass is in and out of the intended receiver at the 10-yard line. Cognigny at the 12, and I think he should have had that ball. Beautiful pass by Novak right in the gut. He just dropped it. Mike to Tui over a little bit. They've been passing the ball in his direction. He was playing him tight, and he hit him at the right moment, but there's no question it should have been a completion. Ball at the 22-yard line now, so it's third and nine now for the Lafayette Leopards. And the wind has been a big factor in this football game and aided Wayland's 37-yard field goal. It was instrumental in the poor Lehigh University punt that got the engineers into this position. And Frank Novak goes back to pass to try to take advantage of it again. Tries a screen to the right. It's knocked down incomplete. Batted down by Joe Colonic, who had a fantastic game last Saturday against Northeastern, including the uh, blocked field goal with 30 seconds to go. Colonic with a great... Uh, Stuff there really is what it amounted to. All four linemen coming in. It was a screen play. They let the linemen come in, but those uh, those men average about six three and a half, six four, and Kolonik was able to knock it down. And now Bill Russo team will take advantage, hopefully, of that win. The this kick will be from the 27-yard line. That was Mark Petty, Shell. Mark was not the field goal kicker at the beginning of the season. He came on, he's had uh, 17 for 17 PATs, and he's now two for two with field goals. And that one was just about from the exact same position that Whalen kicked his from, about 37 yards out. And so the Lafayette Leopards have tied up the football game here in the opening moments of the second period. Score Lehigh three and Lafayette three. We hope that wherever you are, you're enjoying coverage of the 117th meeting between Lehigh and Lafayette. This is Shell Siegel bringing you the play-by-play -play, along with Ed Wetzel providing color for Lafayette College and Denny Deal providing commentary for Lehigh University. 12 minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. So both teams exchanging field goals of 37 yards early on in this football game. And what was going to be, or at least many people thought would be, a high-scoring game has developed into something of a defensive battle with both teams having to settle for the three. Neither team has scored. Well, Denny, you and I were out in Reading Tuesday night, and Barry Fetterman, one of Lehigh's assistants, said it could go either way. He could see a 34-31 game or a 6-3 game. And he mentioned the team with the fewest turnovers might be the one to... Uh, might be the one to capitalize, uh, and it has certainly turned out to be a defensive struggle. Both teams a little bit tight. There's no question about that. Sexton and Raybuck are both back. Kick coming up the field. Sexton has it at the 10, 15, 20, and he manages to get out to about the 24-yard line before the Leopards drop him at that point. Tackled by Roger Carrillo. Roger's done an excellent job on the specialty teams in addition to his strong safety position for La Lafayette this year. Chris Sexton, you can see, bringing it back. Chris has averaged close to six yards per carry this season. 
Wing T left now. Larry Mikulski at quarterback for the Lehigh Engineers. Fakes, straightens up, up the middle, and incomplete at the 34-yard line. An interference coming up on Lafayette. Came and in just a little bit too soon again. Uh, it wasn't a flagrant foul, but uh, he was uh, all over the back of Danny Ryan. May have been Frank Luzzi. Frank Luzzi on the coverage. And so it's a first down for Lehigh at their own 36-yard line. That's Lehigh's third first down shell, but uh, two of them were by penalty. Ryan is out wide to the left. On the counter, Godbolt comes right up the middle, and he's stopped by the center of that leopard line. Little, if any, yardage on the play. Stop made by Brett Larson coming up for Lafayette. Larson is the biggest of those four uh, down linemen that rotate positions in there. The engineers getting very little rushing yardage out of their halfbacks. Uh, John Asler is the only one with any kind of consistent gains, and uh, they're having difficulty establishing that running game today. Godball moves in motion. Bukowski rolling, play action left, completes to Ryan. Ryan just about at midfield. Works his way into Lafayette territory at the 49-yard line, and that should be enough for another Lehigh first down. Danny Ryan, as you see there, coming into the game with 54 catches for over 1,000 yards. He goes on a down and out again, and he is an elusive receiver with great hands, and he and Mikowski know each other very well, even though they've only been teamed up for this season. And that is a key first down play. The engineers may have to open up their passing game in order to uh, help uh, widen those rushing uh, routes. Again, uh, very little... Uh, Effective blocking taking place. The Leopards front wall has done a great job in sealing off the engineer running game. Eddie Godbolt on that play uh, for a pickup of approximately two yards. Second down and eight now for the Lehigh Engineers. Fans didn't get to see that one, but uh, Tony Green, the middle guard for Lafayette, did a nice job to cut back. Ryan is in motion wide right now. Splits out. Now Godbolt moves. Mikulski fakes to Raybuck, straightens up, fires. Ryan complete inside the Leopard 35-yard line. Again, a sideline pattern to Danny Ryan, and that's one way to get one-on-one -on -one coverage for him. He can be double covered over the middle, but uh, not on a down and out, and Ryan just out sprinting his defender and a beautifully thrown ball by Larry Mikowski. Keep in mind, the ball is, uh, the wind is blowing. Good line drive toss there. Perfectly led Ryan. Made the catch and went out of bounds. 33-yard line for the engineers. Ball carried by Godbolt gets to about the 31-yard line. A little more yardage. That was Ed Wallace crashing down from his defensive end position on the left side. Ball finally spotted at the 31-yard line. Lehigh now moving into the win. The game is tied. Lehigh three. And Lafayette three. Pass intended for Ryan, and he cannot hold it at the three-yard line. That was a wild play there. Uh, seemed that Byrne had him covered, then Byrne fell down, and Ryan dropped the ball. Ryan looked like uh, he was first turning right and then turning left, and finally Dan did locate the ball but could not hold on to it. And we move now to a third down and seven situation for the engineers. The ball remaining at the 31-yard line. Mikowski did well to really fire that ball as far as he did, considering that he was pitching it right into a very brisk breeze blowing from west to east. Osler inside the 30 gets down to the 27-yard line, and that's all. That may seem like a funny call uh, on third down like that, but I'm sure John Whitehead considers this four-down territory. I would doubt that he'd go for the field goal for, with that wind blowing. Another play brought in now from the Lehigh University bench. Jeff Hunt comes into the ball game to bring the play. Dan Ryan comes on out. Fourth down, four yards. Big play now coming up for Lehigh University. Mikulski rolling to the left. He's going to keep it. He's inside the 30. 
and he will be very close to a first down at He's the 24-yard line, I'm but sure. it looks like it will be short. The ball is finally spotted back at the 25, and that'll make it one yard short, and Lafayette has held the Lehigh drive and will take the ball over at their own 25. Awfully key play there and uh, not a wise decision by Larry, although there was some daylight. He is not known, of course, as a great uh, scrambler. He did have a shot at it, but uh, the Leopards came up and sealed it off uh, about a yard short of that first down. A big play for Lafayette. Williams is the inside man. Shepko back deep in the eye. The pitch is to Shepko. Double reverse. Now it's back to Novak again. He fires long downfield. And it is incomplete. Cognigny was down for Lafayette. It looked like the engineer's Tui was going to have an interception and Mike fell down at the last moment looking for the ball. He Matter actually, of fact, uh, uh, he had a better chance to get the ball than Cognigny did. Actually tripped over Cognigny, who had fallen down. Tui was with him man-to-man uh, -man the whole way on that flea flicker. And that ball was thrown a country mile, about uh, 50 yards in the air. Russo likes to use that kind of play once in a while. He's got a bag full of them. We may see one or two others today. Now into the shotgun. It's Novak standing back at the 20 on the second down and 10 for Lafayette in white. Fire is Gatehouse has the completion and should have the first down across the 35 around the 36 yard line. Number five Dave Mecca in on the stop there. Jack Gatehouse just has excellent hands. So watch on this out pattern. Novak really firing the ball. He, a little bit of a wobbler that time. I'm sure it's not easy for these receivers today. It's cold on that field. Game tied. Lehigh three. Lafayette three. Second quarter football here at Taylor Stadium. Shotgun. Little over nine minutes remaining to be played here in the first half. Novak nearly fumbles the ball. Picks it off his shoe tops. Hits Gatehouse on the look in at the 48 yard line. Gatehouse is tackled immediately by Dave Mecca. Again, very close to another first down for Lafayette. You can see that Novak picked that ball right up off his shoe tops, did a fine job, and the coverage was pretty decent. But Gatehouse managed to grab it. Of course, that play uh, symbolized a couple of the factors of that shotgun, the ability to uh, see downfield quicker, but also the risk involved in that long snap. Williams inside, Shepko deep on the eye. Novak's going to throw it again, looking, firing up the middle, completion at the 41-yard line. Again, close to a first down. Al Cognigny stopped by Mike Tui, but the Leopards with Frank Novak pitching footballs have brought the ball down to the Lehigh 41. That's Both another teams. first down. Both teams electing to open it up, and that ball was partially deflected. Both teams now going to their passing game. Uh, Get this game going a bit. The voice of Lehigh University wrestling, Larry Sheridan, handling the unofficial clock for us. Nine minutes remaining here in the first half. Game tied at three and three. Again, in the shotgun, it's Frank Novak looking to throw. Up the middle, he's got another completion at the 37-yard line. Ed Opatkowitz grabbing the ball. He's stopped by Shigo. Well, Petkowitz is a very, very fine athlete in addition to, he's not more than just a football player. Bill Russo has said about him uh, that he'd like to have six or seven Edo Petkowitzes on his club. Actually came to Lafayette as a quarterback from Springboro, Pennsylvania. Well, it remains to be seen how often Novak can go to the well in passing. He's been throwing the ball consistently on the last several downs. And then they move into a slot to the left. Novak's going to throw it again. Play action to the left side. He's got a completion at the 34-yard line. That was to Shepko, and that's the first time apart from the attempted screen pass that Bill Russo has gone to one of his backs. He likes to do that. He knows he can't just attack Lehigh with the wideouts. Back now to game action. The ball at the 34-yard line. The game tied. Lehigh three. Lafayette three. The Leopards now moving the ball down deep into Lehigh territory. They've got the ball at the Lehigh 34-yard line. Ball given to Williams, and he has maybe one yard, and that's all to the 33. Right tackle Russ Becker uh, plugging the gap there. And again, uh, the Lehigh front four really has done a remarkable job. Uh, undoubtedly the reason why... Uh, Coach Bill Russo has gone to the air here in his decision on this drive. Lafayette throwing on almost every down. 
Joe McAllara in to make the stop. We remind you, stay with us at the half. We'll have a special halftime program coming up that will feature Dr. David Ellis, president of Lafayette College, and Walter Hansen, chairman of the Board of Trustees. And they'll be joined by Lehigh University president Deming Lewis. And that will be at halftime in today's football game. Novak throws, and it is caught. Oh. A juggling act by Al Cognigny at the 24-yard line, but then intercepted. No, he dropped the ball. Oh, I get, that's right, he did. Dropped that was ball. close. It was a real juggling act, and Cognigny went down and came down on the ball. Let's take a look at that again. Looked like it was on the numbers. Tui's coverage is remarkable here. You can see it hit. It pops in and out. Cognigny tries to recover it, but the ball apparently hit the ground first. Tui all over him. Lehigh takes the ball back at the 33-yard line. Mikulski's pass intended for Ryan on the first down is out of bounds. Mikulski pressured that time by Ed Wallace coming in from the left side. Lehigh currently rated sixth in the NCAA Division I AA ratings thus far this season. This, of course, the final week of regulation play with the playoffs due up soon. Mikulski got a lot of time. Now he runs out of time, and he's dropped at the 28-yard line. Can only hold on to that ball for just so long. Looked like Mikulski had a lot of time, but most of his receivers were covered, and Larry had to eat the football at the 29. That was Luke Dreyer on the stop. Uh, you see here, Mikulski did have time. Dreyer did come up, cover nicely. Dreyer came to Lafayette as a linebacker, but uh, through an extensive weight training program, has put on a lot of weight and turned into a very fine lineman. Started all 10 games last season for the Leopards. Third down, 13. Mikulski's going to throw it. Flutters went out, and it is incomplete. Pass intended down here, I believe, Terry Hefner, down around the 45-yard line. Coverage on that play by George Wilson, one of... Uh, Lafayette's two very, very fine middle linebackers. He and Joe Skladany, uh, probably the best combination linebacking crew in one double-A. Five and a half minutes remaining to be played here in the first half at Taylor Stadium. Lehigh three and Lafayette three. Dan Ryan standing back at the 15-yard line for Lehigh. Cognigny and Cuyos back in double safety for Lafayette. Low pass from center, but Ryan scoops it up and a pretty good kick up into a stiff breeze. Cuyos at the 40, weaves his way upfield, a decent run back, gets it out to the 49-yard line for the Leopards. 30-yard punt for Danny Ryan into that wind. He had to keep it low, of course, to get some mileage out of it, and that allowed the run back uh, by Lafayette, 10-yard return, so a net, uh, net play of 20 yards, and uh, Lafayette gets good field position right at midfield. Seems like uh, throwing on first down has been a big advantage for both teams, Denny. No question, Ed, and uh, this offensive consistency has not been uh, the hallmark on either side. Both teams having trouble putting together an extended drive. Williams and Shepko are the two deep backs behind Novak. Fake is to Shepko. Novak takes two steps up and hits Gatehouse at the 37-yard line, and the ball is then dropped. But it's a ruled as completion. Gatehouse at the 36. And again, Lafayette, Ed, has seemed to show a remarkable ability to just pick up enough yardage for the first down. Those receivers know just where to go. Gatehouse went just the 10 yards, got the ball. The coverage was very good for Lehigh, but it's enough for a Leopard first down at the 36. That was not one of Novak's better efforts, uh, but Gatehouse has exceptional hands, was able to pull it in. Seems like men on both teams are falling down. Of course, with the heavy rains yesterday, that may not be surprising in today's game. This time, Novak is chased and is dropped by Shigo back at the 46-yard line. John Shigo, of course, has been all over that field, and this time he came on the blitz, and he teamed up with number 92, Joe Kolonik. Two men have had standout seasons for the engineers. You see here Shigo coming through. Novak thought he might escape, but John put a tight ankle on him and uh, took him down. This is probably the four-minute warning now. Since there is no operating clock, they are due for four-minute warning, and I guess that's what it is. 
Four minutes to go in the half. Today's game is being made possible by several public-spirited Lehigh Valley corporations identified throughout our telecast. If you would like to know how your company or business can participate in underwriting Channel 39 sports events as well as other national public television programming, write to the Program Underwriting and Development Department at WLVT Channel 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, or call 867-4677. Novak's back to throw, up the middle, and all alone, absolutely all alone, was Ed Apatkowitz, and he couldn't hold the ball. Well, I'm sure Eddie's very upset about that. He was all alone. I don't know if he would have made it to the first down or not, but he had all kinds of green turf in front of him. Ball at the 45-yard line. We want to remind you that if you're watching today's game on WITF-TV, Channel 33 in Hershey, and you'd like information about underwriting public television programs on the Hershey, Pennsylvania station, Channel 33, contact WITF-TV, Channel 33 in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Back in the shotgun now goes uh, Novak, standing at the 45. He really bombs one downfield. Double teamed and incomplete at the goal line. Extraordinary effort down there by Corbo. And good defense by Joe McAlara and Dave Mecca in defending him. It looked for a moment like Corbo was going to be open and get to the ball, but the safety came over and did a nice job in breaking that up. McAlara nearly had it. You can see it was at his fingertips, too. And so now the Leopards now will try to put Lehigh back deep with four minutes to go in the first half. Shar will punt it from the 45-yard line, and he just line drives it into the end zone, and it goes in and comes out to the 20. Timeout on the field, time in for Denny Deal. Denny? Members of Lehigh's Asa Packer Society meeting at the university for the first time ever in October paid a tribute to Deming Lewis in the Stabler Athletic and Convocation Center. It was announced that a quarter of a million dollar scholarship fund will be established in his name. Dr. Lewis, Lehigh's 10th president, will retire at the end of the current year in June. Over 800 people attended that dinner, made up of alumni and friends of the university who have contributed $1,000 or more annually. Tribute was paid to Deming Lewis by Harold Moeller, president of the board of trustees and society president, Lee Iacocca. Ball handed to Osler, and Osler has five yards coming up the middle now for the Lehigh engineers. If you've just joined us, we're at Taylor Stadium on the Lehigh University campus. The game is tied. Lehigh 3, Lafayette 3. Both teams swapping field goals. Lehigh's getting theirs in the first period. Lafayette's theirs in the second. Both of them 37-yard kicks. One by Petty of Lafayette and one by Whalen of Lehigh. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. Ball is kept and running right out of bounds with the ball. Gain on the play of three yards is Larry Mikulski. Again, we remind you, stay with us at halftime. Mikulski wiped out half of the Lafayette band on that play. Deming Lewis will be joining us, and he'll be talking about building programs and future projects at Lehigh University. And David Ellis, president of Lafayette College, and Walter Hansen, chairman of the board of trustees, will be showing you scenes of the Lafayette campus and what will be happening out in Easton over the next several years. Pass is complete at the 34-yard line, and it's enough for a first down. A fine-looking pass to Tom Nichols. And it will be a first down as the engineers now try to move against the clock. They brought the ball up to their own 35-yard line. Nichols, another one of those fine players out of Nazareth. A little bit bigger than the one that graduated last year, though. At six foot four, 218 pounds, one of the bigger Lehigh tight ends, and he has done a fine job over his career for the engineers. Murkowski, play action, complete to Ryan, pickup of 13 yards. Ryan running out of bounds at the 47-yard line of the engineer. You begin to see the respect that Lafayette has to show Danny Ryan. They have to guard him deep, and of course, they have been going to the sidelines to get that isolated coverage. Wide open play down the sideline. Nice throw by Mikulski, 13-yard play. One minute and 30 seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. Mikulski's back. Long bomb downfield. Overthrown and out of bounds. A foot race. Ryan going downfield, and he was pursued by John Byrne, but the ball was overthrown at the 15-yard line. Mikulski did a brilliant job just to hurl that ball into that brisk wind. He threw it about the 45 yards downfield. I can't believe you could overthrow anybody into that wind. 
clock stopped unofficially with a minute and 21 seconds. Courtesy of Sheridan Time Systems Incorporated. 3-3 tie. Whalen, 37. 440 to play in the first quarter and then 280 gone in the second period. Petty tied it for the Lafayette Leopards. Mikulski up the middle, overthrown at the 40-yard line, intended for Ed Godbolt. You know, despite the 3-3 score, you might think this is a bit of a boring game, but it's been an excellent football game. There have only been two penalties that I can recall, both were those pass interference penalties on Lafayette. That's right. It has been a very clean game and very hard fought. We knew both uh, teams' defenses were solid, of course, ranked in the top seven in the nation and the fewest points scored against them. And it has been a very, very fierce defensive struggle. Bob Shaw has just entered the game for Lafayette as they go into their nickel defense. Third down and ten for the engineers as the Leopards would love to get this ball back with uh, wind at their back. Godbow looking for first down territory will not have it. He does cross into Leopard territory at the 48-yard line. The engineers momentarily waited a second to check with John Whitehead if they wanted to go for it, but it's four yards to go. The engineers are not going to uh, try for it, and so the Leopards will have one more chance with that wind at their back to uh, perhaps go out of here at halftime with a lead. Bill Russo has had good success with his two-minute offense. Of course, he doesn't have that much time available. At New Hampshire, he got a score just before the halftime, marched the ball about uh, 65 yards to get it. Kuyos and Cognigny back. Ryan moves up on the ball. It's a high kick. It skitters off the end of his foot, and it covers very little yardage, maybe about 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's the uh, second shank for Danny Ryan, and a tough break for him. That's two out of three. Of course, uh, in a situation like that, uh, Going for fourth down would hardly be a worse yarded situation than a bad punt, but uh, there's a lot of pressure out there kicking into that wind, and uh, Danny has had two shanked ones now. Ball is at the 38-yard line now for the Lafayette Leopards. About a minute to play here in the first half. The game tied at 3-3. Three and three. Shotgun formation. Novak is back to throw for the Leopards in white. He throws, overthrows Cognigny at midfield. Cognigny covered by Mike Tuohy of Lehigh at the 50. Bit of a dangerous sideline pattern there, Ed, uh, throwing to the long side of the field and to the wide open side of the field. Mike Tui had it well covered, and if it had not been uh, thrown high, I think he really would have had a chance to step in front of that one. Very dangerous pass, but I think you can see Bill Russo's offensive philosophy. A lot of coaches might want to sit on it at this time. Second down and 10, under a minute, first half. Pass is out, completed. And bringing the ball up to the 42-yard line this is, is Kuyos. Kuyos. And Kuyos gets it out to about the 43-yard line. That's where it'll finally be spotted. It'll be a gain on the play of four yards and a third and six situation for the Lafayette Leopards. Moving in quickly to their two-minute drill, calling two plays at once in that huddle is the quarterback, Novak. And let's see. Everybody managed to get back. That's but now live. The ball is snapped. And it is thrown low to Cognigny. It was hit mix up there I believe that well the engineer defense uh, felt that they had a correct call on an illegal procedure and they convinced Novak that it was a correct call Novak stood up and the ball was hiked to him he wasn't ready for it he but kind of agreed that it was illegal procedure the only people that moved though were the backs and I think uh, there was nothing wrong with what had happened I, I'm there. inclined to agree with you it was just a good sales effort by the engineer front line <laughs> and they convinced Novak Char will be kicking it from the 29-yard line. Mike Tui goes back for Lehigh. He's standing at the engineer 15. About a half minute remaining to play here in the first half at Taylor Stadium. A low pass from center, and Char gets off a fine kick with the wind at his back. Tui takes it at the 12-yard line, tries to escape a couple of tacklers, and he's dropped at the 15. And the engineers once again back deep in their own territory, first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. And so what looked like, or at least what many of the experts predicted, would be a wide-open, high-scoring football game, has seen just two field goals here in the first half. Lehigh's Wayland, Lafayette's Petty, and that's all there is. Three and three in the closing moments of the first half before a sellout crowd at Taylor Stadium, the largest crowd in Lehigh University football history. On the counter play, the ball is brought out across the 20-yard line by Joe Raybuck. He gets out to the 22, again on the play of six yards. It'll be second down and four. This looks like it's going to be the end of the half here. 
Sexton comes into the backfield. Maybe time for one or two more plays. Certainly difficult uh, without the clock. Ball is at the 22-yard line. Ryan is out wide to the right. And Mikulski elects to just run that clock on down. Osler has a first down across the 25, gets out to the 29-yard line. It's enough for a first down, and I believe that will run out the clock here at the first half. And the score at the end of the first half here at Taylor Stadium on the Lehigh University campus is Lehigh University 3 and Lafayette 3.